Listen, this is Pastor TJ, and it is almost Saturday, and I am e excited to welcome you to the campus of the City of Zion, the Mount Zion Church, 701 Van Street, this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. We've got 1,300 boxes of food, fresh produce from farmers to families just for you. You don't have to give any identification or any information. Just bring your appetite, a clean trunk, a big old truck, whatever you want to bring so that we can load you up. Drive up, open up, and we're going to load you up, and you drive on out. One more time. Drive up, open up, we're going to fill you up, and you drive on out. So I'm looking for you this Saturday at 10 a.m. We are excited to be able to serve this community one more time because we're all in this together. So I'm looking to see you. Wave at me. Wear your mask. But we want to see you this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Hello, this is Pastor TJ, and I am excited. We are getting ready to come back, but we're coming back better. I am excited to share with you that we are going to begin a series of prayer services to get you back into the habit of coming in the sanctuary to worship corporately. We are a community church centered on prayer, praise, and preaching. And we want to begin the comeback with prayer. We're going to have a series of prayer opportunities for you to come into the sanctuary just to pray for one hour. You're going to have to show your vaccine uh, paperwork information. You're going to have to take your temperature. You're going to have to wear your mask. You're going to have to social distance. But listen, we're going to have you come in one way, go out the other. But we want to get you back in the habit of coming to the campus. I cannot wait. Look for more information on our social media uh, sites so that you can know when those days, when those times are going to be. But we are readying to come back better. It is our come back better campaign. I cannot wait to see you. So look for more information coming really soon. See you soon. Good afternoon, good afternoon. I would like to thank you for joining us today for Enlightenment Worship. And I know that some of you may be on your lunch break or maybe just be sitting at home, um, but it is definitely a blessing and an honor um, to be able to sit before you today just to share a little bit for these next 25 minutes. Um, I am Elder Davidson, and today I will be talking to you a little bit about if we just do it together. So let us pray um, briefly. Father, I love you. I thank you. I praise you and for just for all that you've done. And God, we ask that you continue to expand us and continue to move us in the way that you will see fit, Father, that I ask that you will continue to bring us closer together and that we begin to work together and do it together. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So again, I would like to thank you for joining today for Enlightenment Worship. Um, and today, if you could grab your mobile Bibles or even grab your paper Bible, and we're going to be looking in the book of James today. Um, and we're going to look at James, the fifth chapter, 16th through the 18th verse. Um, the verses read, um, this is from the Passion Translation, and it says, are there any believers in your worship, in your fellowship, I'm sorry, suffering great hardship and distress? Encourage them to pray. Are there happy, cheerful ones among you? Encourage them to sing out their praises. Are there any sick among you? Then ask the elders of the church to come and pray over the sick and anoint them with oil in the name of our Lord. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick and the Lord will raise them up. And if they have committed sins, they will be forgiven. Confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and then pray for one another to be instantly healed for tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. Now today, again, our topic today is if we just do it together. It says the journey of believers will oftentimes feel like you are by yourself, but you are not alone. We find ourselves in terrible situations and we try to do it alone. 
And it says, while this may seem easier, it is not always the best solution to our problem. I do understand that airing dirty laundry has not in most occurrences produced the results that we pray for, but going viral is not what we look for either. Say so believers are in search of healing, but how do we get there? What if we just did it together? And it's very interesting that we talk about together and as we look deeper into it, that oftentimes in church, we have found it hard to begin to discuss different topics and different things with our fellow believers, our, our peers, our fellow Christians, the church family, if you want to say, or our religious family. And we have difficulties because it seems that sometimes that things just begin to spread like a wildfire and it is not very helpful. And not only not being very helpful, it doesn't always cause healing. And it makes me question, we should probably ask ourselves that what would happen if we did it together? You may ask, what do you mean by do it together? What are we doing together? So we look at these scriptures. It is a couple things um, that I want to kind of focus on today. And it's a couple verses. Um, it says the journey of the believers are oftentimes... I'm sorry, I don't read that already. I apologize. It says together, meaning praying together. And it's the importance of us praying together because if we continue to try to do things alone and by ourselves, it's almost as if the body is separated into different pieces and each piece is all solo by itself. But we all know that the body functions as one unit while we have different pieces and different parts of the body that do different things. It says, what if we walked together? You with God, with your believers, fellow believers. It says, supporting the journey of our brothers and sisters. In this lesson, I want to invite you to begin to take a step forward and, one, encourage our brothers and sisters. Encourage. So it's, it's time out for us doing a thing where we want to put each other down and we want to talk about what he did, what she did, why they did what they did, who they did what they did with and we need to settle down and begin to work together and help our fellow saints walk through things together. So we want to encourage our brothers and sisters to pray and sing praises. The second thing that we want to do um, that we're looking at today is confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and pray for one another to be instantly healed. Now, this healing is very, very important, and we will go in a little bit deeper into that shortly. But if we look at the verses in the translation, I always like to look at two separate translations just to see and compare what the word is saying in different translations. But in the Passion Translation, the first thing it says is that, are there any believers in your fellowship suffering great hardship and distress? It says, encourage them to pray. So encouraging to pray, what does that look like? That could be something as small as just telling them, versus just saying, I'm going to pray for you and walking away and never praying. What we could do is that what we offer the time to pray with them. And maybe if we, not, if we, even if we don't pray with them, there are some things that we can do. We can tell them that, you know, it's okay, but you want to definitely seek God for your answer on what you should do in this time of hardship. As we've dealt with this pandemic for a year now, a lot of church has been shifted to being outside of the building. And while we've been outside of the building, I know some that have probably wondered, what should I do next? What should I, how do I get through this situation? I seem like, it seems like I'm by myself. It seems like I'm going through because I don't have that connection or the normalcy of what I'm used to of stopping into a Bible study, maybe on Wednesday or on a Tuesday or even coming to church on a Sunday. And so while we look at those different things, it is important as believers that we encourage each other to continue in prayer, that we encourage each other to be strengthened through their prayer. And if maybe they don't know how to pray or what to pray for, excuse me, but maybe we just need to step back and help and teach them to pray and explain that there, there is power in their prayers. Now, it also encourages, and there's another encouragement here also. It says, are there happy cheerful ones among you. He says, encourage them to sing out their praises. And, it, and it's one thing to be happy, and there's nothing wrong with that. But we should want to be happy together. 
or have other people happy with us. So if you're happy and you're cheerful, it would be good if you would, I encourage you, and you should encourage others to begin to sing out their praises. And I'm not concerned about what you sound like or what you may look like as you're singing out your praises or what your voice tone is because you are singing praises to God. And I think we need to see more of people just singing praises to God because they are happy and they are cheerful. There ain't nothing wrong with you being happy and cheerful. And therefore, there's no reason that you would need to be happy and cheerful just to yourself. So the first, as I stated before, we're really looking at beginning to encourage each other and push each other forward. See, again, the topic was what if we do this together? So if we were to begin to do these different things together, the church could progress even further, even with church doors being closed. The church can even progress even further, even though it's the building that's closed, and the church has actually never closed because the church is us, the church is you. So if you could just type on the screen, just encourage someone today to just pray. You can encourage someone just today just to sing praises unto God and just to be happy and be cheerful because there's nothing wrong with that in this season. So as we progress forward, the next verse, it talks about the elders of the church. It says, are there sick among you? In the King James Version, it says, is any sick among you? But it says, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray for him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. It says, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now, in this, in this time, I know that we are waiting for the elders to call and check on us. But if you are sick or there are people among you that are sick, why not call out to the elders? Now, the elders are very, very important because the, the elders of the church should have the power that is needed to begin to bless and heal you and heal the sick and to be able to anoint you with oil. Now, I know that due, due to COVID, a lot of you are looking strange, like are the elders going to be touching people with oil and what I'm going to say to you is let the Lord lead the elders, okay? So we have to learn to trust our elders and understand that if the calling, if God has called them to the position that they are in, we should not fail to call out to them as the word states. Again, what if we did this thing together? What if we, we just stopped and put down all of our differences and we decided that we were going to be, become more biblical and stick to what God is saying versus the things that sometimes we just think in our mind. Now, as the elders begin to pray and they anoint with oil, we should expect a healing. We should expect, um, we should expect them to be free from their sins. But this takes us into a different area because if we don't believe that these things are possible and we're asking for prayer, think about it. Do you think that something could be done? Is the Lord going to answer the prayer and we're fighting against the prayer? It is very, very important that we believe what we're asking for, that we believe what God has called us to, that God is calling for, what, whatever we're reaching God for when we are seeking his face and we are seeking him. It is very important that we begin to believe as we pray. What if we did it together? What if we all believed? As we were praying, the word says where there are two or three gathered in my name, I shall be in the midst. So if the two or three are there together and they are believing, I am sure and I believe and I know that God will answer the prayer and the faith by the faith that the people can be healed. OK, as we move further is one area that really, really stuck out. This is the this is the bread and the meat and the potatoes of this matter here about us doing it together. And I want us to look at this in two ways. Um, I've looked at it in multiple ways and I've looked at multiple translations of the scripture. And I've also seen how the commentaries have spoke about it in a couple different ways. But verse 16 says, confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and then pray for one another to be instantly healed. 
for tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. So we look at the scripture, the first thing that it says is to confess. So to confess would be that you openly begin to speak about the offense. I'm going to pause right there because I know that speaking about offenses may not always be um, what we're comfortable with or, you know, addressing the situation or some people say pointing out the elephant in the room. But if we just begin to confess and not only confess, but also acknowledge how you have offend, offended one another. So when we look at the word acknowledge, the word acknowledge is to accept or admit the existence or truth of. So now I know it's this thing that we talk about and we discuss and we say, well, I did not know that I offended that person. But in this scripture, we are looking to one, confess, and two, to acknowledge how we have offended one another. But we don't just stop there. We can't just stop there. We can't just confess and acknowledge and say, well, I hurt you, I'm sorry. Or you just say, yes, you hurt me, and then you say you're sorry. No, this scripture says to confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another, and then pray. So it's very important that we begin to pray together. And what are we praying for? We are praying for one another to be instantly healed. What are we being healed from? We are being healed from whatever the offense was. I'll say that again, that we are being healed from whatever the offense was. I know that this is a difficult area because usually when we are offended and we like to cancel people out and I'm just not talking, I'm gonna block you on my social media, I'm gonna ignore, I'm gonna act like you don't exist, I'm gonna walk in the room, I'm not gonna speak to you, I'm gonna cut my eye, but that is not what God is calling for us to do. James said that we should confess and acknowledge how we have offended one another and then pray for one another. So it takes away the idea that just because you offended me that I don't want you to pray for me, that I don't want your prayers because you ain't gonna pray right, that I, I don't want your prayers because you can't reach God based on what you've been doing. No, the word says to confess and acknowledge how we have offended each, offended one another. So it's not even a one-way conversation. It's not I just confess and acknowledge what I did to you, but it's you confess and acknowledge also what you have done to me. And then we can begin to pray for each other. And the, 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 the key of it all is, listen, it's, it says for tremendous power, not big power, not, not a little power, not small power. It said tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. And so it, there's a few points that are important because for tremendous power to be released, it has to come through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. Now, I'm going to say that again, that it has to come through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. And so we may say, what does that look like? What is... What does this look like? Well, the, I, I can imagine that after confessing and acknowledging that these must, we're talking about godly believers. We're talking about passionate and heartfelt prayers of godly believers. So that's why after the confession and the acknowledgement that of the offense that we can pray for, pray for one another to be instantly healed. We're not praying for you to be healed down the line. I'm not praying for you to be healed tomorrow, the next day, the next year, but immediately, instantly being healed. Instantly, meaning right now, that this thing can be done right now. Y'all don't want to talk about that. I know. You don't, don't worry about it. But this thing, you, you sitting at work right now, it's probably someone that you've offended or have offended you right now, and you just don't want to talk to them anyway. So you probably done cut me off at this point because you're saying, I don't have time for that. But no, 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 no. If you're going to be a godly believer, that you need to confess, acknowledge 
pray for instant healing so the tremendous power can be released at your job so that the tremendous power can be released in your home so that the tremendous power can be released in your conversation and anything that you do so we look at the king james version it says confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man of of much. So it's really similar, but it just kind of says, confess your faults. Think about what you have done. I'll give you a moment. Let's think about the, the, the thing that you've done that you may have thought was small. And then as we begin to confess those things to one another, not to somebody that it don't have nothing to do with, but we begin to talk, communicate from one person to another. Now we can pray. We, we've, been, we've been praying before we've been confessing and acknowledging. We've been praying before we even discussed our faults. We just want to pray and just be done with it and act like it never happened. But scripture is not called, James wasn't calling for you to act like it never happened. James was calling for you to acknowledge that, yes, you know what? I did hurt you. What I said was wrong. What I did was wrong. But let's pray right now for your instant healing. So a good example of a um, tremendous power being released um, through passionate and heartfelt prayer of a godly believer um, would be Elijah. We can just use Elijah as the example. It said that Elijah was a man with human frailties, just like all of us, but he prayed and received supernatural answers. He actually shut the heavens over the land so there would be no rain for three and a half years. Can you imagine three and a half years, no rain? It's just straight drought. Then he prayed again, and the skies opened up over the land so that the rain came again and produced the harvest. So we talk about, I use that example to talk about the tremendous power that can be released from the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. You couldn't tell Elijah nothing about God, he knew what he knew and he believed what he believed. And therefore, when he prayed, God shut the heavens up for three years. And then when he prayed again, not that he only prayed every three years, but when he prayed again about it, the skies opened up over the land so that rain came down again. Just that type of power what if we did this together? What if we did this together? I'll I, I ask that question again. What if we did this together? What if we were able to encourage each other more to pray, to encourage each other more to be happy and cheerful, to just sing praises unto God? What if we begin to confess and acknowledge what we have done and how we have offended each other and then pray together. What if we did it together? What if, what if you didn't go your way and pray and I go my way and pray, but what if we did this together? It says if we did it together and that we pray for one another to be instantly healed, that the tremendous power can be released through our passion our heartfelt prayer of godly believers. Ask yourself today, are you a godly believer? If you really believe in God, that means that if we begin to pray together, that tremendous power, and we should be looking for that tremendous power to be released through our passionate and heartfelt prayers. Let us pray. Father, we love you again. We come to you, Father, and I just pray that someone was able to take something, God, from 
from this lesson that they were able to just take up, even if they just took a small piece, Father, that out of that small piece that your tremendous power will be released in their life, God, that your tremendous power will be released from their passion and their heartfelt prayer, and that you will continue to move in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you um, enjoyed this lesson, um, I pray that you did. Um, if you would like to give and sow into this ministry, um, you can sow through Cash App, which is C O Z M T Zion Church. God bless.